Hi, I'm Cakes, and I'm making a tower defense game about little oranges called Cakes. Yeah, I know. Very creative, Cakes. Ha 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 ha! My dream is to combine my favorite games into a very deep and complex tower defense game. The biggest problem I have with traditional tower defense games is the lack of progression between missions. And so I created a system where towers, aka the Cakes, can train and combine skills that do not reset between missions. I want to add as many skills as possible to create endless combinations. Think about skill shots like League of Legends or party abilities like Mass Rejuvenation and Dragon Age. This changes the focus from managing money, placing and upgrading towers to managing when to use cooldowns. It also allows me to create interesting boss fights and strategies to take them down. I plan on adding items and meta progression through town upgrades to supplement the hero's stats and make them more powerful. I really like how you upgrade your heroes and town in Darkest Dungeon. And I want to build a similar system, though right now the town is only used to manage your team, reset or spend skill points and start missions. Day by day the game is finally coming together nicely. And I'm so proud I got this far. But this hasn't always been the case. Especially in the very beginning of my journey, the quality and look of the game were far from good. The more I worked, the more I realized just how inexperienced I was. And still am. It has been a tough pill to swallow and made it difficult to keep going at times. I was doubting myself and my abilities, especially when comparing my game to other games. And let's face it, you always compare your game to other games. You wanna make the best game? You gotta compare yourself, bro. Of course you do. At the end of my last devlog, I had just gotten into pixel art, and obviously, I was terrible. Here are some of my very first pieces created in A-Sprite. Compared to what I can do now, the difference is enormous. So back then, the outlook wasn't very promising, to say the least. And so I forced myself to stay consistent by drawing a piece a day. And that was the key to success. My ability to draw pixel art improved rapidly. If you take away anything from this video, then the fact that it's never too late to start learning something. And that consistency is the most important thing. By the way, if you want to get Ace by 2, I have a video on how you can build it yourself if you don't want to pay for it. It's a great application for pixel art and I can heartily recommend it. I also put some of the resources I used to learn pixel art and color theory in the description if you are curious. Other than pixel art though, I also realized that I'm still learning how to program. In my last devlog, I had just finished my first iteration of UI in C++. And as the game started to grow, it became apparent that I have to rework my engine because adding features became more and more difficult. You could argue that this is one of the downsides of making your own engine which is what I'm doing. But I disagree, because in most cases, you will have to rework some code whether you use an engine or make one yourself, because you are learning to program while you're making the game. My first rework took me about a month in which I couldn't start my game at all. This was a very tough time. I had to draw pixel art without seeing the result in game and I felt like I was making no progress at all. Eventually though, the rework was done and I could go back to adding content to the game. This was also the time when I started working towards my first big goal. A demo version of the game that everyone could play for free. I really enjoyed this part of the development. Almost every day I could add more stuff. I added new skills. New heroes, new enemies, new maps, new everything. I think the reason why I had so much fun was the fact that I didn't have to learn many new things. For the first time, I could just repeat the same steps. Draw pixel art, reuse same code but change a few things, test if it works in game, and boom, done. I created heroes for every base class I wanted. A knight that can block enemies, a ranger that can shoot air units, a cleric that can heal but also attack doing half damage, and a mage who primarily shoots fireballs that deal AoE damage. I also added a bunch of different enemies and turned one of them into a boss that uses skills. And so in July it was finally time to release my game as a free to play demo for everyone. I cannot describe how happy and proud I was at that point. Obviously there were quite a few bugs and problems because a lot of people were playtesting. But getting my game out there made me even more determined to keep going. During this time I realized I really wanted to be a game developer. And no matter what happened, I would just keep working, making it better. At this point I want to thank everyone who played the demo and gave me feedback, either through Discord or my stream. I really appreciate your support, thank you very much. Now that I had the demo out, I noticed that the look of my game was missing something. 
My pixel art had improved, but it was lacking depth. I made a short video earlier this year on how I tried tweaking my pixel art further to increase depth, but even that was still not good enough. In case you couldn't tell, my pixel art is heavily inspired by Stardew Valley, and so I tried to figure out how that game achieves depth. I took an in-depth look using the graphics monitor from Intel. This utility allows you to inspect how a game is being drawn on the GPU. If you are curious, I put a link into the description. It's worth checking out. It's a good utility. So after extensive research, 75 years later. I think I found out that Stardew Valley applies an ambient color together with an ambient mask. I might be completely wrong here though, and it's much simpler in reality, not sure. But I managed to achieve the same effect in Photopia by applying a mask and cutting out holes where the light sources are. Getting to that point took way too long though. I think I spent like two weeks trying to figure out how to do this. But after trying it out in my game though, the difference was amazing. Here's a side by side view, before and after. <laughs> now you might wonder why I did it this way instead of just reading great articles like Graveyard Keeper, how the graphics effects are made and just did that. Listen, I don't know man. My brain don't work sometimes, and for some reason, I start doing weird stuff. I think I wanted a quick fix, and all the other tutorials seemed like too much work at the time, but, but. I plan on going through and implementing every single step in the Graveyard Keeper article over time. I think it's one of the best articles out there, and I wish I had found it earlier, but I guess that's just how life goes, eh? Now that light was a thing, I started reworking my levels, adding light to them. And this is when I had an amazing idea. What about a mechanic, like in Darkest Dungeon, where darkness increases the monster's stats, but it also increases the rewards. Since I already want to add items and resources to the game, it seems like a perfect fit, an optional challenge in order to get more loot. I got the idea because I played Darkest Dungeon No Torch Runs. Have you ever played Darkest Dungeon No Torch Runs? Have you ever played Darkest Dungeon? What do you think about this mechanic? It's actually something that's very high on my to-do list, so I would like to know what you think. Currently, I'm trying to get my game ready for Steam. According to smarter people than me, a thumbnail on Steam is the most important thing. Because Steam, in a way, is just like YouTube. A good thumbnail is as important as the game. If no one clicks your game, then no one will play it. So currently I'm in the process of drawing my own thumbnail for my game because I can't afford myself an artist. I know this is a bad idea and against all recommendations, but it is how it is. What do you think about my thumbnail? Obviously it's in a very early state, so take that into account. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like and subscribe for more game dev related content. If you like what I do, consider tuning into my Twitch. I stream at 10 a.m. Central Eastern Time, which is 1 a.m. Pacific Daytime. If you want to directly support me, you can do so via Patreon. This will give me more time to work on my game Cakes Today, and you will get reading access to the github repository patreons will also be called out at the end of every video subscribing and leaving a like also helps a lot thank you very much for your support so yeah thank you very much michael phillips felix f meo meo the writer and shrubdorf for your support